This is the first weekend for the beginning of the summer, okay? This team has been through a lot this year. Time! Time! Oh, kind of dumb. Yeah, we lost it. Like, when you get in high school season, people don't care as much. Not only did the run score, but now she's standing there. I didn't go to homecoming until my senior year because I always had a tournament the day after. If you think that your life, you're going to wake up and you're going to follow this straight path to um, a perfect travel ball career, um, a, a wonderful college experience, and on into having kids and, and growing into doing whatever you want to do as an adult, um, that is far from ever going to happen. I just have to get myself in shape physically, but also mentally. I didn't make the team, and that was probably the biggest shocker of my life. The one complaint that we hear constantly is that the players just don't have enough basic training. Softball's not going to last my whole life, so, um, but I will take things from softball into my whole life. That's what I'm talking about when I tell you that we have to come together as a team. It's not okay. You guys keep cutting corners and cutting corners and cutting corners. The people on the field are selling out to win that game. And if you're sitting in that bench and you don't have the decency to want to engage, I'm talking about you should be on the fence yelling at the runner, not just cursory runner, runner. You got a young lady out here who's new to the team who's trying to help us win, who's working her butt off, and we can't, we don't have the decency to help her. It's freaking maddening. It's got to stop. Or this team is best, and we're not going to accomplish anything if we can't get over that kind of stuff. It pisses me off beyond belief. There's no way that girl can walk into third base. And you guys got to own that shit. Who was sitting on the bench? Raise your hand right now. Okay, so own it. You're, you're keeping a book. You're working on something. There's a bunch of girls sitting there that aren't doing anything. I could at least give you a hall pass for that. But I didn't hear from the, from the outfielders either. Come on, guys. Just tell me right now that's never going to happen again. Okay. All right. Mark my words. We got it on video, Dave. It's never going to happen again. I've seen this shit before. And this, it just, it's, it, it's, I'm telling you, I've, I've asked you nicely. Now I'm upset. And, and the thing is, is that we keep asking and we're going to never get it. We're never going to get this until you guys decide to do it. And it goes back to so many little things. 30 years I've been doing this, and I've seen the players that cut the corners hurt their teams that whole time. So stop it. God damn it, get in the boat and row. I need both feet in the boat. I need your ass in the sea, and I need you rowing the boat. I don't need one foot on the dock and one foot in the boat. I need a commitment. The problem here is most people have their own definition of the word commitment. You want to play college ball in the Power Five? Be ready to get dirty, bleed, and shed a lot of tears. It's all part of the package deal. I just want to win. So you gotta have somebody holding your hand every step of the way, you'll never make it. Next stop, Fountain Valley, California. It's another five game pounded out weekend. Even though she could have stayed home, Marlene showed up showcasing her new knee brace. Larissa is back in the lineup. Two more players joined the team since last week. This weekend's lineup includes elite teams from all over California. Commitment involves the whole family in our world. Unlike our last weekend of friendlies, this weekend is all about displaying our skills on the field in front of college coaches. This is our version of a competition reality show. 
but in our version, we just don't have a few judges, we have hundreds. With more than 16 players on the team, and only 9 positions to fill with players, there's just not a whole lot of opportunities to make stupid mistakes. Players aren't the only ones on the field competing. It's everybody in the park. Coaches, umpires, and even the parents. Everyone wants to look good. Hey, coach, that's enough. Oh, Swanee, huh? Swanee, here we go. Okay, that's okay. yeah. coach. All right. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. That's enough. While everybody is busy arguing ball strikes and hitting home runs. Anything can happen. Severe injuries, unsatisfactory grades. We've had coach firings. Now we get kids that transfer. Not developed enough as a player for their program, on the wrong travel team, not in the starting lineup. You're decommitted. That's too bad, the college recruiter says. I know you're only 17. It's nothing personal. It's only business. These young women are spending so much time uh, their own precious time at a very important stage of their life to commit softball. And whether it's practice, whether it's games, travel, recovery, you know, their social aspects of their life take so much of a back seat to the things that they want to accomplish on the field. And I think it's so actually rewarding for them to achieve so much. And I think being a part of a team teaches you so many different things. And this is competition at the highest level. It's fierce, it's tough. And I'm so happy that girls are putting their attention onto those important things. Hey, work your head now. Here we go, you all right? Bring that down, huh? My brother and my sister left for college and like they moved out to Arizona. They were always the athletes that I looked up to. So I kind of lost the sense of, oh crap, like who do I look up to now? So I kind of had to realize like I have to look up to myself, which is interesting and you, you have to grow up at a very young age, especially with colleges looking at you. So that, that's a struggle I would say a lot of young athletes in today's society have to deal with. You have to grow up very young. You're in seventh grade and you have to decide where you want to go to college. Like that's crazy. That sleepover Friday night because you have a showcase the next morning and that college might be there or you can't go to somebody's birthday party on a Wednesday night because you have practice. So it's just kind of losing a sense of childhood, but in the best way possible because you are growing up, you're learning things that you're gonna have to learn eventually, you just learn them at a really young age. And yeah, I missed out on some people's birthday parties and this, that, and the other, but I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't do that. So it was definitely worth it. I think starting where the game is today will really help people understand what it takes for young women to be at a high level and compete successfully. Um, this game of softball, kids are becoming elite ball players at such a young age. They are specializing, they have fielding coaches, hitting coaches, strength and conditioning, speed and agility, you name it. And they are developing into incredible athletes at a very young age that, you know, hitting a ball is one of the hardest talents to have at, um, in any sport. And for them to be able to do that with the speed of the game as softball, it is just incredible. Um, and so I think what it takes to get to that level is all of that, is specializing early, the commitment to excellence um, that it takes from both parents and that student athlete to really dedicate their training, the hours, the travel, balancing academics and practice and all of that. It really takes something special. And I do think that there are some in this game that are just chasing a college scholarship and getting to a school but the ones that are successful at a really high level love the game, they want to be the best at what they do, um, and it takes them being able to manage all of those things, the pressure um, to be able to succeed at this level both academically and athletically. And I'm just so proud to be at the head of Duke Softball and see so many girls' dreams come true where they can now have the best education in the country and play in a Power 5 school. Uh, but it really takes these girls being committed to excellence in all areas of their life to be able to achieve that. It's one thing telling a story about a team and another playing against the team. Just in case you forgot, the one on the right is my former coach and we all know the coach on the left. That's a great job, Nick. Had a girl my back to the pitch. Uh, the recruiting process is obviously probably the most emotional part because you doubt yourself as a person constantly. People doubt you. Um, and some journeys are easier than others. People have relationships with coaches that they build that you know help them thrive. Some people struggle with relationships. Some people um, just can't figure it out. They, they're on the wrong team. They're with the wrong person. They don't have a relationship strong enough to express what they want. Um, yeah. Shoot, 
But being a softball player, it's just really hard to get people to understand what you're feeling without showing your emotions and wearing them on your sleeve, you know, because um, on the field, that's the biggest thing that everybody tells you. When you strike out, don't let anybody see you, you know, upset, you know, just don't take your bat to the, to the field, don't take your defensive mistake to the plate. And that's so hard to do because obviously as a person, you're, you're, you know, you have feelings. And as a female, <laughs> you're even more emotional than you are anybody else. So um, it's hard and it's, it's one of those things where it's like people are constantly out to get you is what, you know, that's what it starts to feel like. You start to feel like people are just out to make you feel bad about yourself. And that's a mindset that's really hard to overcome personally because I've had coaches tell me that, you know, I'm never going to get a scholarship. You have people telling you, oh, the only reason you got a scholarship is because you're good at this, but you're not good at this oh, don't expect to get a full ride because you won't get one, you know, and it's just, you kind of have to just take it in and, you know, one year in, one, in, one ear in and out the other. It's just, it's frustrating, um, but you can't let it get to you. She doesn't want to go you like it, Seven, you drive that ball. Well, I've seen, you know, women's sports, I've seen it firsthand growing up in a home with three sisters that were all very competitive athletes and great athletes in our family. I remember traveling to see all their softball games and their basketball games. Um, my entire childhood. So I've seen the level um, of commitment that they really learned at a young age and the discipline they needed to accomplish their goals. Competition, it doesn't matter male, female, you know, eighth grade, professional athlete, competition's competition. And everyone's gonna get out of it what they put into it. And I think those are great, great lessons to learn. I do think that there's so much that goes beyond uh, the untrained eye when it comes to softball. It is a sport that requires speed, athleticism, power, um, great softball IQ because the game moves so fast. And I think that there are a lot of great athletes out there that are pretty good at what they do, but they get passed up because they just haven't developed those little finite details that are required for them to be successful at a really high level. And um, the kids that have that wow factor, you can see the differences in their skill. Um, not necessarily their ability, because I think there are a lot of players out there that have the talent to do it, but have they been coached and trained to do all of those things in the time that they're being looked at? It started started as probably like a 14, a first year 14s, um, and just getting some looks, some sniffs. I would say that's how we, that's the way we looked at it. You know, attending the on deck camps, uh, some camps that uh, that really maybe some schools that she was targeting, and um, it started out a little slow in first year 14s. Last year as a freshman, um, really took off. You know, the spring she had a really came back from high school and just. It clicked. You know, I think that's timing is everything with recruiting. I, I honestly believe that because she had a great season leading into leading into summer through spring when we came back. She hit the camps and it all happened really, really fast for us. Um, uh, on deck camp was great, you know, um, and that, that kind of triggered everything in a couple of tournaments at the right time. And you have the right performance in front of the right people and that's the fit. It's sometimes you get the right fit and it is what it is. You know when you when you see it. I think what I've noticed most about this whole early recruiting frenzy that's happened with softball is a lot of people have lost their way in the process and lost sight of what's important. And to me as a coach and now as a mom who has a daughter going through it, it's really important that you know the kids stay focused on what do I want out of this. It's not just getting the scholarship or getting a particular coach to like me, but who do I want to become in the process? Easy. Yeah. And, and what happens when you calm down? You hit. hit. Yeah. You chase and you swing at that pitch that was a rise ball out of the zone like you were trying to hit the thing to Huntington Beach. And, and it was a ball. What's hard, I think, is that there's other factors in the life that you know, contribute to your performance. It's hard to perform when you're not feeling 100%. You know? you know, there's people that struggle with depression. There's people that struggle with anxiety. There's people that have their parents going through a divorce. There's people that, you know, someone's sick in their family. A lot of people look at softball like it's an escape, which it is, but it's hard to escape 
real, you know, reality in real life, it's hard to escape that no matter what because it, you're in it. You're constantly in it. It's around you 24-7. So how can you necessarily escape something that's always on your mind? Come on, see it. When it comes to having a daughter as a pitcher, it's, it's one of the most stressful things I've ever endured in my life. You're not really enjoying the game, you're looking at her mechanics. Um, you can fill every pitch, every single pitch. Um, you can fill, you're not filled. And the mental aspect, um, she has to be ready. I mean, she practices at least six days a week, um, conditioning, preparation, pitching, and she also has to fill is a big part of the game and it's hard on my wife and I um, listening to music, having her rhythm down right before a game, um, having her mind cleared. To see her out there, but when she does perform well, it's worth it. Block out everything. Block out everything. Jesus, let the action do. If you want to get them to play at this level, it's a sacrifice. Um, not just for your daughter, but it's also for the parents because you're going to have to make sure you get them there and you're going to have to pay for it financially. Then they are a pitcher. I need you guys to walk in the, the batter's box understanding that. Get in there and relax. Put yourself in. Just start playing chess a little bit and understand you got more pieces than they do. You got to play the game better. So don't don't show him your cards. He's been doing this 100 years like we have. He, he knows. Sometimes you guys get in there and you're all tensed up. Relax us. I know it's your first at bat and you haven't played a lot. But uh, relax yourself. He sees you stand there and you buy the bag. He knows exactly what he's doing. Okay? You got to disguise that. Make him work a little bit. Okay? All right, there you go, coach. All right. Okay? All right. You know, you rely on softball to make you feel better sometimes because like it, you know, it's your whole life, but when you're not doing good, it's like another, you know, another piece of the puzzle that just won't fit. So it's, you know, it's, it's really hard to overcome these, these mountains that you feel like are inevitable. You know, it's just you can't control that they're there. But it's just one of those things, too, at the same token, where you wish that people would understand. You know, you wish that people would understand what you're going through. But as an athlete, I feel like a lot of the times we build up these walls and these characters that we want people to view us as and, you know, things that we don't want people to know about us because we want to be that strong athlete that, you know, doesn't take no, doesn't, you know, it's hard because it's like you're a person and you have feelings and you're a human and that sounds cheesy but it's, it's so true. game has done so much for me you know I started as a six or seven year old girl playing the game because my uncle played baseball and I wanted to get out on the field and to see what opportunities this game has given so many young women myself included um, it's, it's a beautiful thing but again I think it's important to understand um, the game transforms you and it can really bring out the best or the worst qualities in you and um, I've really seen it challenge me to be a better person on and off the field. It's allowed me to be a better mother, a better mentor, um, and I hope that every girl that plays this game becomes a better person because of what they've gone through on that field, and I hope that they're touched by a coach who helps inspire them to be a better person on and off that field, uh, and we really pride ourselves on that here. Our girls come and lead as better people, um, better communicators to the community, they're going to achieve in the classroom and they're going to do great things on the field. And the softball is a gift, it's a vehicle, um, but you have to use it to your advantage to come out on the better end of things. It's a life-changing thing that you take part in and 
you grow and you fail and you cry and you, you laugh and you have some of the worst times. I've had a lot of bad experiences where uh, we might have lost the game because of something that I've done, but I've definitely grown from it and um, it just brings out something like a, I don't, like not another side of you, but it just really um, brings out your competitive spirit, I think, on another level. Going in with your best friends and um, sacrificing and doing everything that you can to um, advance your friends or back up your pitcher or anything. And I think that it's it's definitely more than a sport to, I would say, everyone that plays it. I think it's really like a life lesson in a sport to me. Okay, 2-0, oh, live action here. Don't get near that third baseman. I don't want a line drive double play. Delay your lead. Make sure we get there, huh? If the opening of this weekend is any indication of how this ends up at the end of it, well, next week ought to be a thrill of a ride. With two teams on our schedule picked to be in the top five of the National Championship Series, it could be a make or fall apart season before we get the high school season grind out of our blood. If this is passive and this is aggressive, okay, and halfway is here, and right now we're here. The thing that I learned about when I started coaching female athletes was my thoughts and expectations about what they would be like and what they were actually like was completely different. Female athletes are, they're so tough and so focused and so determined and it makes me really feel good about what's happening in our society with these women. Um, I think that our country and our, and our society is in good hands because of female athletics. It goes back to Title IX. I mean, certainly that the, was the turning point, but really uh, it's so much more than the cliche things that you hear. It's, it's not, you know, girl power and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not that. It's way more than that. And it's, uh, these female athletes are all, uh, they're all doing great things too at the end of softball. They're finishing their degrees, they're getting their masters, they're entering the workforce, they're changing the world. They're, uh, they're focusing on coaching. They might be, uh, whatever career choice they're in, they have a, a, a body of work and sacrifice and commitment that they take with them into life. We're not quite to the aggressive side. We're still slightly on the passive side. Let's go that much on to the aggressive side and everything changes. All of a sudden the barrel's there instead of there and we go back to being what we are, which is a hitting team that makes things happen. Saturday night, it's past 8 p.m. As a few of the college coaches remain, most of the teams have put away their cleats for the day. Last two teams standing in the softball park. Although most of us are tired and sore, this is where it matters. It's late, cold, on the field for several hours. This is where the test happens. This is where the college coach decides if he's going to invite you on campus or not. In my own experiences, uh, personally for me, I obviously have an outgoing personality. Um, I joke around a lot, I laugh, I dance, I sing. I'm obnoxious <laughs> to a certain extent. So when I'm not having a good day, it's written all over my face. You can tell that I'm not having a good day. And it's really hard for me to act like everything's okay if it's not. Uh, I don't hide my emotions very well, which is a blessing and a curse. You know, I can't, I can't lie to you because literally how I'm acting is how I'm feeling. But at the same token, if I don't want you to know, you're gonna know. So um, that's such a struggle for me and I'm sure a lot of people have the same issue because obviously when you're out here, you can't just be like, oh yeah, my dog just died, but let me do cartwheels on the field. So it's just working over those, those little issues that you have and you know, just hoping that people understand. <laughs> Showcases often remind a player of how fragile this game is. Just like a TV show, if nobody watches, the next thing you see is your show on the cancellation lists. It's not unusual to have a committed player get decommitted after showcases. Last show for today, no ambulance needed or players being carted off the field. Just a few bruises, scrapes, and soreness to remind us of the physical game we play. It's no surprise why people come to Southern California, but it is a surprise when we don't have to wake up before the sun to get to a softball field. It almost feels like I'm on vacation. 
After eight hours of being in a softball uniform on Saturday, our Northern California friends were in no mood for child's play. All right, coach, that's enough. Awesome. Oh, Samani, here enough. we go. Okay. Yeah, up. Yeah. Coach. All right. Showcase or not, when it comes to competition, players aren't the only ones doing the showcase. The Whatever you call it. She I just can't. No, wait a minute. She just can't go home. She's got to have that bag. Come on, there's no way you can take, ran. You can take that away from me. Oh, that's just going home. You're, you're getting involved. This is just a showcase. And when things don't go as planned on the field. I need your ass in the seat, and I need you rowing the boat. I don't need one foot on the dock and one foot in the boat. I need a commitment. It all comes down to what the college coaches have been saying all along. Does the player have what it takes to play at the next level? Remember Marty Tyson and the Corona Angels from the start of our journey? Here they are, live and in person. That's Coach Kenny. He takes over when Coach Tyson is not around. Swing to drive in run. That's a defensive swing. I want you to drive the ball. Let's go. They knew about our talent and they let us know that there were others also with talent. When I say slide, we're sliding, okay? Quality at bats, understanding the strike zones. You guys can be unstoppable if you understand what you're gonna do. They wanna do well, they wanna play well, they wanna be good players, and they want to go to the schools that they're going to and enhance the tradition that those places have. Vanessa, any questions, anything to add? I was just like doing my own thing, not caring, not taking it serious. At the just end of the cuss. season, I just felt horrible about how I played and I wanted to get better, so then I just started working out more, working harder, pitching more, and it paid off now for me. It was a good weekend, oh God. I think. <laughs> okay, anybody, anybody else? G? I'm proud of everybody. I think you become mentally stronger and like more mentally prepared as you go. Like you can't just like sit down and be like, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do to mentally prepare. Like it's, you have to just keep playing. Like you basically keep like adjusting as the game goes on. So I think during the games, like the more I was like in different situations, I got more mentally prepared for the bigger things. And then mentally, it's honestly just, it's what Jim would say, it's like calm the noise in your head. Like when you're up to bat, like to drown out the noise and just focus on yes, 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 no, like reacting instead of like, like having a plan instead of like, I don't know, thinking too much about what you're gonna do. Okay, Jaden, anything to add? Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting home runs is great. Striking out a dozen batters in a game is a good day in the stat book for sure. But what happens when you're not doing these things in the eyes of the recruiter? I guess that's why more than 95% of us are never even offered scholarships. You still want to play college ball in the Power Five? And that thing about getting dirty, bleeding, and crying? Well, that's only part of the package. The other part is still anybody's guess. Especially going back to visiting Duke and everything and going, um, oh my gosh, there was a bug on me, Dad! And to know what I have, oh my god, that's hard. <laughs> oh, you know the wop yeah. you wop, 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 wop. <laughs> so like, and then come back. And then when I got hit in the head, because I fouled off my head, Well, yeah, because if you just stop, then I don't know if you'll be rusty, but it'll just be off.
couple changes for strikes. Other than that, really, she's either in or she's New out. Pressure. And all the ball movement's coming in here. Okay, so never mind, right? <laughs> right? So yeah. we still got to go. Got, well, we got about half of them. Right? We got about half of them, right? That's <laughs> about all I got left. It's better than none. You either go to fielding or be a cheerleader. Decide which one you're going to do. You're going to have to give up one of them, though. Mm -hmm. Do I have to read anything? Do I have to read anything? Darn. I like reading that stuff. It's harder than you think though. Because sometimes you mess up. And if I pull you to the side in public play, wanting it to be just you and me. Yeah. So neither approval, this is our life. Oh. And girl, if we decide and make this more than one night, cause parts have been 